So let's start in uh, Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. Now this has to do with the Ten Commandments. Now we know that under the New Testament that we're not under the Ten Commandments. We're under the law of love. It, the Ten Commandments have been replaced with something greater. And so you, if you walk in love as a believer, if you walk in love, then uh, you're un under this law. You're under the law of love, which means that you will keep the Ten Commandments. Amen. It's just automatic because, because this was done from without. God gave them these commandments from without. But when you're born again, God puts that law of love on the inside. But in the, in the 20th chapter of the book of uh, Exodus, in the 21st, 20th uh, chapter, the first verse, he said, And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Second commandment. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. And what I want to talk to you about this morning is graven images. Graven images. Now, he says we're to have no great, we're to make no graven images. This is not just Old Testament. This applies to New Testament as well. Now, I want to say this before I get into this this morning. It probably won't be long because I couldn't probably take too much of it, and you couldn't either. But uh, what I want you to know, first of all, that I have no purpose. I have nothing against anybody, anywhere, or any group of people. That's totally beside the point. I am not on a soapbox this morning. I've got one purpose and one purpose only, and that is the kingdom of God. Amen. I'm not trying to prove anybody wrong. I'm not trying to, uh, again, tell you what I believe. It is all about the kingdom of God. Everything I do when it comes to this ministry, it's about the kingdom. If I fire somebody, it's because of the kingdom. See, every kingdom has a culture. The kingdom of God has a culture. And in that culture, certain things are established, certain things are acceptable, and certain things are not acceptable. If I hire somebody, it is for the purpose of the kingdom. It's not for the purpose of blood. It's not for the purpose of family. It's for the purpose of the kingdom. If we move a building, it's not for the purpose of somebody or something. It is for the purpose of the kingdom. So this morning, my assignment has to do with the kingdom and the kingdom alone. I am more committed to the kingdom of God which is the culture or the domain and the rulership of God. I am more committed to that than I am people. Now the kingdom is made up of people, but I can't operate in my feelings for people. I operate in my heart for the kingdom. And that's just the way it is. And so I don't want you to think that I'm talking to you or to any particular group, although it will include groups, okay, and certain doctrines and certain ways of thinking. Now, I heard Lester Summerall say this this week. He said that he, many years ago he was um, in Africa, and he went to this place, and I forget what he called it, but what it was, actually it was a place 
where people built uh, um, idols. They, would, they, they, they did sculptural work. They made statues. And he went in there and he saw every hideous thing. He said, the mind of man, it seemed like it was impossible to even think of the kind of hideousness and the, uh, the, uh, the perversion of what they had created out of stone or out of wood. And he was so shocked that he asked the man in charge, he said, where do these images come from? How, how, did, you, how did you come up with these kinds of images? These kind of images, you know, never flow into his mind. But he said, where I get the image is from my mind. I see it with my mind. And then I create what I see with my mind. So anytime there is a graven image, and God said there to be no graven images, anytime that there is a graven image made, it's because it came out of the mind of an individual. Now, this is what we have to understand. These people, if they're going to present a God and say, okay, this is your God. It's just like the children of Israel. Moses went up on the mountain. What did they do? They created an idol. They created a golden calf. Why? Because people need to see something. Okay? So it's not just enough for it to abide and live on the inside of a person in their mind. There's got to be some outward manifestation of that that's going to come and where the people can look at it. They can't look into your mind. But when you create something out of your mind, now you know what's in the mind. Amen. Now, the same thing is true today. We have images in our mind. We have graven images in our mind. And to a large degree, you can tell what the image is because of our behavior because of what we do, because of what we say, then you can see the graven image that we have on the inside of us. Every day we live, you and I, in, in, in this nation, just living here, our mind is flooded with images. If you have been to the universities and you graduated from the universities, then honey, you have had a lot of stuff put in your head that creates a graven image. Now you have to have enough Holy Ghost and enough wisdom to know what to accept and know what to reject. Now see, this is the way these graven images are created in our mind. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. It's just one piece at a time. We accept this piece, and then we accept this piece, and then we accept this piece, and we don't even know what's happening. We don't know what has happened until the whole puzzle is sitting there in front of us, and we see the whole picture. Now we are operating in an area of being brainwashed. We are operating in an area of darkness. We are operating in an area of the demonic and we didn't even know how it happened. So today, society, there's so many things out there that are trying their best to program our mind and to create an image in us that will, that will dictate our behavior. Are you getting this? I hope you are because this is serious, serious business. One piece at a time, one piece at a time, the devil is, is blinding us and deceiving us See, it's not just him's temptation. God, he doesn't just operate in temptation trying to get you to sin, trying to get you to do something. His main uh, weapon is deception. 
And how does this deception come? It comes to the mind, but how does it get in there? Would you let me share some things with you? One way that these images are created or this image is created in our mind is through music and songs. You have to be careful what you listen to. Even over here in the Christian circles. And certainly in secular circles. You can't listen, and I've heard people try to argue, you cannot listen to country music, to rock music, to rap, are you listening to me? Without it creating an image in your mind. You might not see the whole image at first, honey, but it put a little piece in the puzzle. Now, I listen to some songs. My favorite song is Courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue. Mm hmm. Sung by what's his name? Toby Keith or something? Yeah. There's some, it's, it's, it's a patriotic song. What was a guy, Greenwood? He made a, a patriotic song. Uh, huh? Yeah, Lee Greenwood. Uh, there are some songs that I will listen to, but there's some that I won't listen to because of what it says. Because of what it says, because of the message that's in it. And here's the thing about it. One of the prettiest songs, Christmas songs, that I, I, I wish I could sing. I have a blue <laughs> Christmas without you. That is so pretty. And I want to sing it so bad. But I don't want a blue Christmas. I'm just saying, I can't do that. There's something in me won't let me sing that song. Unless I'm doing it in jest or something like that. You know, it's just something won't let me sing. And you know, it's not like it's evil and it's sinful and you're going to go to hell for it and all this kind of stuff. But it puts a piece of the puzzle in my image. There are, there are, there are church songs. Well, we won't have to worry when we reach that golden shore. In other words, you got to worry while you're here. And the Bible tells us not to be anxious about anything, to cast all of our care on the Lord. Amen? So there's some Christian songs, some in the hymnal, some I can sing, some I can't sing. Amen? Why? Because I recognize that as the piece of the puzzle that's creating an image on the inside of me. TV. Oh, Lord. TV is designed to take your time and your money and to create an image on the inside of you. It is creating a, a, a graven image in your mind. Now, see, I've said this before, and now it's, 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 it's still true. See, my concern is the kingdom of God. My concern is that the world is going to get in the church. It already has to a great de degree in a lot of churches. And some of it is slipping in here on us. And we have to wake up. And the only way we wake up is when we hear the truth and we obey to the, the truth. TV. As a matter of fact, there's some TV programs I cannot watch. As a matter of fact, there's some TV programs or movie channels. I've got direct TV, so I've just got very few, just the very minimum of the, uh, uh, the movie channels. I do have two or three, something like that. But I rarely can ever watch any of them. Because see, when it, because see, uh, Robert De Niro. See, I won't watch him because he's an evil man. 
and he's evil toward this country and he's evil toward God. And when I see him come on the movie, he's a great actor, but I will not watch that. Nicholas Cage. I will not watch a great actor. And I used to watch him before I found out, but uh, I won't watch him. Tom Cruise. Any movie he's in, I won't watch. Now, not every, not every person in Hollywood, most of them, I'm guessing 80, 90 percent, are evil. But there are a few that actually have a brain. Um, so, anyway, uh, Clint Eastwood has a brain, you know. So I watch him. <laughs> Hallelujah. But there's some of them I will not watch. Uh, my conscience just won't let me. After I find out a thing, I can't do it anymore. If I'm doing it ignorantly, then that's one thing. But once I find out, I uh-uh, no more. And see, if everybody thought like I did, this world would change pretty quick. Amen. I thank God that I came out of an ultra, ultra, ultra holiness background. They went too far. They went too far. But at least they went somewhere. They taught holiness. Amen. They even taught it the wrong way. They taught about sin so much that that's all people did was sin. Amen. But thank God that, that, that God put something in me and I believe in holiness. I believe in purity. I believe in living right. I don't believe, I don't believe we should look like the world, think like the world, Talk like the world. Ladies, you don't need to dress like the world. I mean, if it's not for sale, then quit advertising. Amen. And you have to think in terms of not what you want. See, it's just all it. Uh, don't let don't make me get into. Don't make me get into piercings and tattoos. Just don't even don't. Make me go there. But what's the purpose of them? How does it affect the kingdom? What does it look like? The world. That's what the world does. Like it or leave it. It's what the world does. Now, I remember in the 60s. You don't, but I do. Now, see, in the, in the South, well, it wasn't just in the South. It was all everywhere. It was everywhere. Ulysses S. Grant had a slave. And it was only after Abraham Lincoln gave him authority, made him general over the, over the, the union, that he had to let the slave go. Slavery was not just in the South. And the war between the states was not over slavery. It was over the same thing. Everything's always over. It was money. We had the climate, we had the soil, we were making the money. Hello out there. But we came up in the south, and in the south we had a graven image put into us by the people that went before us. We had a graven image on the inside of us concerning black people. And so that image was wrong. But that image is hasn't, listen, listen, listen. It hasn't totally changed in everybody. But it's changed in a whole lot of people. And people talk about white privilege. In a lot of respects, it's black privilege today. I'm just telling you the truth. I have never, when I go to the store, when I go, I treat, I don't care what color your skin is, I'm going to open the door for you. I'm going to be polite to you. I'm going to respect you. I'm going to treat you. If I don't know you, I'm going to treat you the same. Amen. But see, that image had to change. You know how that image was changed? It started with uh, actually Lyndon Johnson, wasn't it? Uh, but it started with John F. Kennedy. Because, see, up until then, there were no TV programs that had black people in it. Do you know that? I mean, I like to watch Andy Griffith, but there was never a black person on Andy Griffith. 
Why? Because it came out of the 60s. So what happened was, is that John F. Kennedy and through his ministry, he began to change that. And the way he began to change that was he would, he would, uh, 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 he, he, I don't know how he did it. He implemented black people into sitcoms, into uh, uh, movies. And it was always, they were being mistreated. Now that was okay because that was the truth. Are you listening to me? And so it began to change because it began to affect the conscience of a nation. You see what I'm saying? And so things begin to change and they have changed, greatly changed in this nation. Now I have to, by saying that, I have to say this. There are black people today that still are slaves. They live in the past. Mm-hmm. They moved from the plantation. The Democrats moved them from the plantation to the project. And since they did them like the, 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 the American Indian, the Native Americans, they put them on a reservation, give them just enough money to stay drunk all the time, take away their, their, their self-respect, their creativity, I mean, their self-esteem. Hello out there. Did you know that Abraham Lincoln hung? Oh, I didn't know I was going to get in all this. He hung the, the biggest mass hanging execution of all time was Abraham Lincoln. He, he hung 30-something Indians at one time because he got pressure from the people in government and from, uh, from you know, people who had money and authority. He executed, I've seen pictures of all the platforms where they hung them, 30-something. You know what they hung them for? Because they caught them hunting off the reservation. Anybody here? See, there's a whole lot of stuff that's going on. So now the Democrats have created the projects, put black people in there, give them enough, enough money, took away their initiative, took away their self-respect, took away their creativity, and just put them in there, and they don't have to fight for anything, and the only thing they do is fight one another. And that's why you've got all these gangs. Slavery is just a, a, as much alive and well today as it was 150 years ago. They've just changed masters. They went from the plantation to the project. Are you listening to me? Now see, in this house, we have people of color who are real Americans, who are real hardworking people that love Jesus, that are making a difference. Let me hit this before I go any further. White folks don't ever vote for somebody just because they're white. Black folks don't ever vote for somebody just because they're black. You vote according to the values of the word of God and who fits those values the closest. And that's how you vote. And Geraldine have I already, and I have already voted. And there's not even a decision to make. See, because we've got this lady, Stacy Abrams, who believes in abortion on demand. She wants to take away our guns. She wants to fill this state full of illegal immigrants for us to feed and take care of us hardworking people. Hello out there. Us people that now they want to take them. They want to cut our Social Security because they don't have enough money to give us our social security and, give, and, and, and take care of all the illegal aliens in this nation. I could get angry, but I'm not. I'm just, I, I want you to see something because I'm going somewhere. Okay? So there's so much going on that's trying to program our mind. They want to tell you and just give you pictures and images in your mind of kids in cages. There are no kids in cages. 
All you've got to do is throw enough lies out there, one right after the other, one right after the other. I've never seen anybody in my life as persecuted as Donald Trump. And the reason is because he is doing more for this country than anybody's done in the last 30 years. And they want to pick him apart. They want to pick, pick him apart. His, <laughs> God, <I'm, clears throat> anyway, I better get off of that. But I don't care. The truth's the truth. Barack Obama was the worst president this nation's ever had in my lifetime anyway. Uh, and uh, if you wanted, if you, the only way it could have gotten worse, if we'd elected Hillary. Hello out there. Now I'm not supposed to, they, they did tell me that I'm not supposed to get up here and talk about politics from the pulpit. They'll take away our tax exempt status, but I, I think Trump's already changed that, didn't he? Hallelujah. Bless his darling heart. So now, now what we got on TV, now what we have on TV is we have uh, the, the, the TV stations, everybody now is working toward creating a, a, an image on the inside of our mind of accepting homosexuality. When I see anybody in, I don't care what I'm watching, when I, even, even Discovery ID, when I find out they're homosexuals, I own it, I cut it off. When I see now they got commercials, I saw, I don't even know what the commercial's about, but I saw two men on the couch the other day. Did y'all see that commercial? Yeah. See, what are they doing? They're using the same thing in the negative that they used in the positive before. They are creating a, a graven image in your mind, and you, some of you, and some of you by internet are, are buying into it. If you don't have the, 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 the values of this house, you need to find you another house. If you don't have the same values I do, you need to find you somebody that you can follow that, that, that has the same values as you do. They are, they are programming us how they're doing. Picture shows. Movies. I don't go to movies. Why would I want to pay money and give money to the devil's operation? How is that going to benefit the kingdom? How is that going to help the kingdom of God? You're full of flesh. You've bought into a mindset, to a graven image that this world has programmed you into and you didn't even know it was happening. TV, internet, social media, and politicians. I, I, would, I turned over, when I found out yesterday that there had been another shooting, I turned over to CNN to see how they could blame Trump for it. So he's the one that's, with all this rhetoric, Never mind. Oh, God. Are y'all ignorant? Did y'all know anything? Because if you already know this stuff, there's no need to me saying it. Amen. But you're talking about a bunch of foolishness. Let me show, let me show you what's happened. Romans chapter 1. Paul talks about graven images. You didn't know that, did you? In Romans chapter 1, now if you don't think, if you think this is old Dave, he's ignorant, he's unlearned, he's not, uh, he's just old fashioned, he come up in another generation, he's old school, uh, whatever you want to think, but I'm saved and I'm anointed and I know God. And I'm successful. Most of the people that started out with me didn't make it. Most churches that start don't make it. 
there's more churches closing down in the United States than there are being built. There's more preachers quitting than the, Ron Carpenter said it right over here in South Carolina, Pentecostal Holiness Church. He said there's more of them quitting now than they are being ordained. After a while, the bottom comes out at the top, honey. But look here in Romans. Now, what I was going to tell you is this. If you think I'm the only one that's teaching these things, I was watching Robert uh, Jeffries the other day. He's a Baptist man. He's preaching uh, uh, the same thing I'm preaching. He was calling the people to, to repentance, calling the nation to repentance. And he said he was listening to uh, Keith Moore, Keith Moore doing the same thing. They're not like Andy Stanley. See, Charles Stanley, uh, his image is different. His son has got homosexuals in leadership and on the front row of his church. But I can tell you what they don't have. They don't have the anointing. They've got intellect, and that's all they have. Romans 1, 16, Paul said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And therefore is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, that is, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest to them. It says in them in the King James, but to them because that which it, that may be known of God is manifest to them for God has shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Don't come telling me somebody's born that way. Don't come telling me a bunch of foolishness if people can't help who they are and what they are. I don't even care if preachers say it. You are without excuse. Let's see what he's talking about here. What, what it, he say, this is what he's saying. The Bible says in Psalms, the heavens declare the glory of the Lord and the firmament showeth his handiwork. In other words, what he's saying is, is any idiot ought to be able to look at the sky and the clouds and the earth and the bugs and the, and the rodents and the animals and the, and the vegetation kingdom. And any, you got to be, you got, see, there's no excuse. Atheists decide to be atheists. Homosexuals decide to be homosexuals. If that's not true, we might as take this, take this Bible and throw it in the ditch somewhere. People decide to kill their babies. They're, they're without excuse. Now watch this. Because they, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their what? Imaginations. Who controls your imaginations? Let me ask you something. Who controls your imaginations? Who? Jesus. Well, the rest of you must be devil possessed then. I got three people that said I control my imaginations. I have bad imaginations every day. I have imaginations. You know, I don't know how I never sat down and count them in a day's time, but I got all kinds of imaginations, but I cast them down. I don't let them live in me. As soon as I find myself thinking the wrong way, I deal with it by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the word of God, by the weapons of my warfare. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God that are pulling down the strongholds, casting down what? Images, graven images, imaginations, and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. They became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Because when you imagine things in your mind, 
When you imagine dark things, when you think upon, upon dark things, that darkness gets into your heart. That is your value system. And then what you used to value, you don't value anymore. What is good and what you like and what motivates you is it used to be good. Now it's bad. Their hearts are darkened, professing themselves to be wise. The wisdom of this world is foolishness in the sight of God. People go to Yale and Harvard and Columbus, Columbia and all of these other, oh, all the colleges, and they think they're so smart. God says they're fools. I said the word of God says they're fools. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into the image made like unto corruptible man, to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up. God did. Andy was talking about God gave them. You want to disobey God? You want to fight against the truth? You want to take the side of the liberals and the Democrats? You go ahead, honey, but I got news for you. You You taking sides against Almighty God and the kingdom of God. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Why have we had such a flood of people coming out of the closet? Because they wouldn't heed God. They wouldn't retain God in their knowledge. All of a sudden, they didn't know, but a piece here and a piece there and a piece here and a piece there, and all of a sudden, they've got a whole picture, a whole image, and they're, oh, God. Wherefore, God has given them a uncleanness through the lust of their own flesh to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. For this cause, God gave them over to, gave them unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Women making love to other women, sleeping with other women, having sex with other women. You can justify it and play with it all you want to. You can't change this word. You can be as wise as you think you are. You're still a fool. And likewise also, men leaving the natural use of a woman burned in their lust one toward another, men working with men that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves the recompense of their error which was meat. So the more we create this image in the minds of our generation, of our children, of our teens, that homosexual, homosexuality is acceptable, then all they have to do is be tempted and then they'll fall into that group. Why? Because it has become acceptable to the church, to the world, to the government. God said to Adam, it's not good for man to be alone. So God created him another man. What did he create? A woman. Now, you know, if some of y'all want to get real, you, you women might get mad, uh, but it's the truth. Did you know that men... Uh, just naturally have a tendency to look at pretty women. Especially, you know, if they're dressed real sexy. There's just a tendency there. I'm 69 and I still have to deal with it. 
there was a there was down at the Royston Baptist Church. There was a a teacher that he was he was the he wasn't the teacher he was visiting he was the pastor's daddy. He was the pastor's daddy, and so he was in the he he visiting the church. He went into the men's Sunday school class, and one of the questions they asked him, they said. Brother so-and-so, and he's 80-something years old. He said, how old? How old? Because this man was wrestling just like most old men that ain't queer. So he said, how old you have to be before you are not tempted to look at a good-looking woman? And he said, I don't know. You'll have to ask somebody older than me. So Andy and I, we're riding down to Athens the other day, and we're near the university because I'm going down to the eye doctor, you see. And so you know what? It's a, it's a beautiful day, and you got all these little girls running up and down, you know, jogging with their little short pants on, you know, with the little splits in the side and all that kind of stuff. Matter of fact, I'm going to get Geraldine some of those. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't got the size. I don't got the size and everything. And she can do that around the house with me. You know what I'm saying? Just <sighs> so you know they got guys. They got these girls running. You know we, you know we, me and Andy. We <laughs> <laughs> we both fight this thing. <laughs> And uh, <clears throat> but you know there were there were guys running up and down there too. And Andrew said, you know, I just got I just got no desire to look at them. <laughs> well, I don't either. <laughs> Ladies, why y'all dress up so nice? Why do y'all wear hose? You don't do that to keep your legs warm. <laughs> nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with looking good. You're supposed to look good, but you look good for your man. I say you look good for your man. You dress for your man. Hello out there. And when you're out in public, you dress godly. You dress like someone that's becoming to holiness. Now, when you get to the house, if you can find a time when the place is not full of the grandkids, <laughs> dear God, yes. graven images, our minds, or y'all like that, then y'all like that stuff. <laughs> y'all always like it when I talk about sex. But I've, I've matured a lot. I used to say some real raunchy stuff, but, you know. <laughs> Brainwashed. Abortion. Did you know I got a little grandbaby? Oh, Jesus. Oh, he's so sweet and cute, and I love him so much. He's just precious. He was born prematurely. Did you know it would have been legal to abort that baby. And yet it's happening every day. This nation has done so much to invite murdering spirits into it and we don't have enough sense to understand why we have such murder today and mass shootings and that kind of thing. You can't kill babies and not, and not, it be, I mean, you just can't do it. It's murder. Same sex marriage is an abomination to God. Mixing Islam and Christianity is an abom abomination. 
opening our borders to people and letting anybody come in that wants to come in to this nation illegally. Here's what they don't understand. We fling the door open. We swing the door open for the, for the Muslims. They don't leave their God, their, their devils at the border. They bring them in with them. Everybody that crosses that border down in Mexico, from Mexico, brings their own demons with them. We've got a march right now, people. At one time, somebody said 14,000. One of the newscasters now, they said it's not that many that uh, coming into Mexico, heading for the United States, coming out of Honduras. Did you know that Honduras has the number, is the number one capital uh, murdering nation in the world? They have more murders in Honduras, gangs are killing one another. I went down there. The night I got there, the pastor that invited us, his youth pastor was murdered because he used to be a gang member. And they had to bury him at night, two or three o'clock in the morning, to keep the other gangs from coming in and tearing up the funeral and killing people. The pastor himself, his wife, no, excuse me, his daughter, had been, had been kidnapped and raped for days. We turned the corner on a Sunday morning and people were looking over in a dumpster. And the pastor stopped and said, what is it, a baby? And they said, yeah. They just take their babies. They don't can't get abortions. I guess they take their babies, throw them in the dumpster. Those are the people that are trying to get into the United States. To either join these gangs or to either or start their gangs. But we have a demonic mindset, especially over in the area of liberals and, and, and Democrats, that says we need to, with open arms, welcome them. We don't need a wall. Watch this. Let's keep reading. And likewise, also men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one to another, men working with men that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meet. For even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Did you know that half of the, over half, listen, over half of this nation voted for Hillary Clinton. She got the popular vote. That means that over half the people in this nation are reprobates, which means they're void of judgment. Why do I preach? I don't want it in here. I, don't, I, I hope you have seen some things this morning where little by little by little you've let this mindset slip into your thinking and you're becoming more and more and more like the world. And see, the thing is, is you don't even have to do this stuff. Let's see what he says. 29, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, and covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, mal malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents without understanding, covenant breakers without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death. But watch this. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. If we take pleasure in these things, it's just as bad as doing it. 
You know, I didn't write the Bible. I'm glad because, I mean, otherwise y'all be mad at me today. I know you wouldn't get mad at me, but somebody could get mad at me because I'm preaching the Bible. But in 1 John chapter 2, John said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. He's not talking about the planet Earth. What's he talking about? If you love what the world loves, the love of the Father's not in you. Now, one, one, one way I understand this that I'm teaching you is because the Holy Ghost has showed me some things along the way that I have accepted. See, the more you do something, the easier it becomes to do it. And not only is it easier to do it, but it's more acceptable to those you have influence with. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. See, the reason we have to teach this is because we all have flesh. And our flesh, there is lust in every one of us because we all have a flesh nature that still exists in the unrenewed part of our mind. If there was not lust in us, then there would be no temptation. So lust has to be overcome. Lust has to be dealt with. Your flesh, that old nature, wants to do the same things that it did before you were born again. The Bible says there's a war going on between the flesh and the spirit. The flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. They're contrary one to the other. The lust of the flesh. We have everybody, every one of us in here have to deal with it. Do you know what? There's things about me I don't love. There's things about some of you I don't love. Why? Because it's so much like the world. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If I got the world in me, I may be struggling with it, but I can't love it. If I ever start loving it, then I am self-deceived. Every one of us in here probably struggling with something in our flesh. But don't love it. Don't accept it. Don't say I'm all right because I've tried to get past it and I can't. If it's sin, it's sin, whether you're getting past it or not, whether, whether you like it or not, it's sin. See, that's exactly where self-deception comes from is when you find things in yourself and you justify it because you say things like, well, I'm not as bad as so-and-so. So-and-so did it, and I guess I can get by with it. See, anytime anybody in authority even in the church and in the, in the, in the government, whenever the, when they're the, are caught in sin, it releases something on the people. Bill Clinton released something on the United States of America with our young people. When these great ministers, when they stumbled and fell, I heard other pastors saying, he had, a, he, had a, he had a ministry. He was ministering to hundreds and hundreds of thousands, and I don't do what he did. That doesn't make it all right for you to do what you're doing. Your relationship is between you and God. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Why? Because the things that are in the world came out of the minds of men. Grave, graven images. It's written in their thinking. It's written in their minds. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. Does the devil use eyes for lust or not? That's why you can't just sit and watch anything and not be affected by it. You are being affected by it. 
Do you know that what you see can arouse all kind of uh, all kinds of things on the inside of you, all kind of lust on the inside of you that you thought was dead? But they're just waiting there. See, we think we can get by with a little sin here and a little sin there and a little sin here and a little sin there. No, no, that thing that you had to overcome that you got delivered from is still waiting for you right there. And the pride of life is not the father but of the world. What did he say? For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. The lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. I'd rather abide forever. My God, people, we have left off restraint so we can listen to about anything we want to. We can see, watch about, sit down and watch about anything we want to. We can allow ourselves to get in any conversation we want to and think that it's not affecting us. We think we can dabble a little bit here and a little bit there. It's not hurting us. No, honey. There's another piece of the puzzle going into place. And one of these days, what do you have? You have an image and you were deceived by the God of this world. Well, I told you I was going to mess everything up. <laughs> it's my gifting. Guys, let me ask you something. If we keep letting the world slip into the church, Brother Hagin used to say this, whatever is in the world will slip into the church. The believers in 1 Corinthians, they began to participate in the fornication, in the sacrifices, that were in Corinth, in that culture that was so strong and had been established, they began to dabble in it. It became into the church and Paul had to write and try to stop it. He told them, don't let these kind of people in the church. Why? Because when the church becomes like the world, we lose our effectiveness. Now we're not a witness anymore. See, today it is just popular. To be a Christian, it is well received. I mean, it's just, I mean, when you can just have Jesus and everything else your flesh wants, that's an easy sell, isn't it? We're, 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 we're the Jesus that we serve. And then did you know that, was it Nero, that killed hundreds of thousands of Christians? Lions den, wild horses tied to wild horses. Just put people to death as a sport hang Christians in the garden and pour fuel on them and set them on fire and light your garden with them. Does that sound like Christianity today? Some people, some people are risking their life every day to preach the gospel. 
They're going into Muslim co countries, and some of them are being martyred. They're being martyred every day. You don't, you're not going to find it on the news. Being martyred every day. And we don't even like it because we change buildings. You have got to be out of your freaking mind. Freaking, that's one of those worldly terms, you know, that I've got, <laughs> that I need to deal with, I guess. But it could be worse. <laughs> you see how these, that's a good example of picking up what's in the world. To picking up the terminology, the mindset. <sighs> it's time to seek God, isn't it? It's time to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God and repent. See, we have been, we, we, we've been deceived into thinking that it's more important not to hurt somebody's feelings than it is to promote the kingdom. The kingdom comes first. The word comes first. Everything around me, not everything around me matches up to this, and I don't understand everything that I see. And I don't understand why I still have a problem matching up with this. But I'm not going to say it's all right. I'm not going to say it's all right for me to have unforgiveness because I've been hurt and wounded. It's not, it's not all right. For me to do drugs and become an alcoholic because I was raped or because I was molested or because I came in to the house and found my daddy that had, had committed suicide and therefore I'm a, I, I, you know, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. We're without excuse. Sure, some bad things happen to everybody in this room, but we have to fight till we win. We have to overcome. Yeah, it might have to do with some of our behavior and some of our decisions and some of our, our rhetoric and so forth. But you don't accept it. You fight it until you win. The Bible says fight the good fight of faith. Stand up. Hallelujah.